All right, welcome to the video. In this video, we're taking a look at Studio One version 5.5 update, which is the most current update at the time I'm doing this video. We have a lot of love that's been given to the project page. Now, a few thoughts on the project page for me in general, and then we'll get on to actually playing some examples. And we've got some great material to work with here. Okay, so I've been using the project page since I started using Studio One. Actually, I started using Studio One version two, the end of version two, and I think the first time I used the project page was probably version three. But I'm going to be honest and say that I've always felt that if it came to mixing or rather mastering an album, that it was usable, but what I really needed or wanted was I needed the ability to have control over my different multiple gain stages and my signal routing and have automation available as well. So you can see in this case, two of the major features that were added, if we scroll over here, we have clip gain, which is something that's added in Studio One version five that is now available in the project page. Small differences that this stuff is making, right? We're talking about bringing, potentially bringing down versus a dB or a half a dB, bumping up choruses, or even something more dramatic, like ramping something up if you need it to swell. Now, this is all happening pre-fader on the track, meaning that this will feed into any plugins that are sitting on this individual track. Now, in addition to that, we have automation. Automation is huge. I am definitely not afraid to automate. Uh, when I mix in general, you can see that I have these different areas, my waveforms, well, not, not in all cases, but in a lot of cases, I'm not afraid to push a master fader. I'm not afraid to push my VCAs. I'm not afraid to push into my bus compressor aggressively on certain sections where it's needed. But when we're talking about finessing things, this is all about little moves and having that control. So clip gain pre-fader adjustments that we can do that are going to push into the plugins that are sitting on the individual track. Of course, we've always had event gain. Take a look at these over here. I'm pretty sure they're all probably somewhere around zero. I tend to be pretty consistent with my levels when I mix. So I don't think there's any adjustments here on any of the event gain. But it, let's see, it does look like, yeah, we have some fader adjustments that I've made in, in, these, in these cases over here on certain tracks. Okay. Last but not least, we have the Listen Bus. Listen Bus is an amazing feature. I never thought I would have really used it until I started running room correction software. Um, then it became a huge part of my workflow. As you can see, this is a, a, a project that was created in a previous version of version five. So my room correction was happening in the post insert slot. Now, the thing that was a pain in the butt with this is that any change that I made, for example, if I adjusted the gain or something like that, this would automatically trigger a loudness flag for me to update my loudness on every single one of these tracks. I don't think this is the case any longer. So let us remove this. And now we have the listen bus in a separate tab over here. And as you can see, I have the newly updated version of Sonarworks. Right now, I have a profile loaded for these, which is basically only doing correction from 1K down. But also I have a bypass because I actually almost prefer these completely flat. So that's a shout out to Olo S4X. I uh, created an awesome set of headphones, and these are my reference headphones for mixing and mastering, in addition to these ones over here, which are my closed backs, and the closed backs I use fully calibrated all the time, uh, but they do have a deadly accurate mid-range if I need it. So, with all that being said, let's take a look at some of this stuff in practice. One thing I do want to mention, though, is... If we go to the master and the listen bus, notice that we have the ability to basically choose the output for each one of these. I'm using my main outs and then I'm using line out one and two on this quantum uh, for my listen bus. Now, one thing you might want to be interested in doing is let's open up the preferences and let's go to the project setup. This is probably what your project page is going to look like in general. I think you're going to have inputs and outputs. You may have the listen bus. What I recommend doing is a good thing is if you have um, if you have an I/O setup that you use for your song, especially if you have lots of analog gear set up, go to a song could be an empty song, export an I/O setup and give it some name that says for project page or something. So once we export our I/O setup, I'm going to now import this, and you can see where is it over here? I've created one of these specifically, uh, Quantum System Project Page. Um, 
I have this set up over here. Uh, as you can see, November 26th, this has been in beta for a while. So let's open this up. And now we are basically resetting our IO and I'm gonna click apply and let's click okay. Now at this point, we could actually, let's go back to project page. At this point, we could actually make this the default IO setup for the project page if we wanted to, so that every new project would, would be set up like that. So if I now make this the default, then that's how it would be set up. I'm just gonna click okay for now. So now in our master, main outs, left and right, and in our listen bus, this cleared out my plugin, but that's okay. In our listen bus, this is already set up the way that it needs to be. Okay, brilliant. Now I'm going to pull up just in case I need it, I'm gonna to go to my browser and let's drag in this preset into, actually it doesn't matter for me, I could put it in, in the inserts or the post. Okay, so this is now set up, I'm just gonna pull this back a little bit in terms of my level. Now, this is set up to use if I need to, if I'm going to be monitoring through that. Right now I'm just listening to the main outs in terms of recording this video. Okay. So that's the first thing we have this set up and now everything is working as expected. We have our Pro L3 and then we have our um, our sonar works, but only on the listen bus and, and anything that we change in terms of these adjustments here, they won't affect anything that we have in terms of our gain staging. Okay, now the material that we're going to be working with here, um, this is by Fat Hat, which for anybody who follows Personas is Rick Nackvi and John Bastianelli's band. Phenomenal set of musicians from uh, Baton Rouge area. I had the pleasure of mixing this album for them last year. Still waiting on one last song to finish this, and then uh, this is going to be released. Some of these tracks maybe you're familiar with, uh, some of them maybe not. So we'll have a look at some of these um, adjustments that I've made here, and we'll talk about why. So in these cases where we have this chorus, um, let's take a listen here. First of all, I'm gonna bypass my clip gain. I'm gonna play from about here. Well, fellas, they will only know, only if they told them so. Keeping an eye on these levels. Now let's pass it into the chorus. Only if they told them so. Just give them something to shout about. Just tell them what we're talking about. That fun. It'll start you. Now this has decent punch already, but I just want to kind of exaggerate this. So all I'm really doing in these cases is, as you can see, I think I'm doing probably about yeah, not much, just like 0.7 down, which makes the chorus punch out a bit. Such a small, subtle thing, but it makes a huge, huge difference. So that would be the clip gain, right? And then we come out of the chorus into the verse. To all of you pretty girls and handsome guys, if you want to get your chance, Get on up on the dance floor. And then we have another area over here where we can automate. So for example, notice that I've just basically popped the fader into touch mode. And this is a great thing about using the fader port with the, with the project page, is that now I can automate this. And this automation is obviously feeding into a limiter. Now, this track has got a lot of peaks and I wanted to give it as much loudness as possible. So a little bit of standard clip and we have our limiter. And if we listen to the two of these together. Just slowly climbing up. Very, very slow, subtle movements. Maybe we're gonna go one dB. Okay, so maybe I even pushed that a little bit too far, but you get the idea. We have control over how hard we hit the different processors in terms of um, feeding into our main limiter that's sitting on our main outs. And in addition to that, I could even automate this standard clip plugin if I needed to, or if I felt that that's something that needed to be adjusted. Now, for other 
basic things, I would basically just be going through here and I'm going to work the same way I always have. Um, but clip gain is going to be a huge part of getting things to sit dynamically, right? <laughs> I'd probably enable clip gain on everything. And then I'm just going to go through each one of these. You think that only yesterday I was cheerful, bright, and gay. Looking forward to, but who wouldn't do? Just going through. Sweet love to you. No. What I'd probably do is search for the verses and choruses. The rest of my life in my whole life. I can't remember. So, so I mean I'd really have to make a decision and this isn't something that I would do over a video. Um, it's all about understanding where your gain stages are and also monitoring how hard. Yeah, it's, it's just having the ability to go very simply though, uh, if we took a look at this in practice, it would basically be just engaging an automation mode on this track. So, just a very simple process of just going through each one of these tracks. So, just it's just a killer workflow. I mean, this is pretty much, if I'm being honest, this is what I always kind of wanted. I always wanted to have the ability to go into these different sections and say, all right, well, this could use some clip gain. I want to bring this up. I want to bring this a little bit down. And the other cool thing, like I said, is the whole entire time that I'm doing this, I can be listening to Sonarworks if I need to. Um, and if whether I'm working on a different set of headphones or if I'm working on different speakers, but this is just, I mean, it's the update. It's the way that I wish it always functioned, if I'm being honest. Having these abilities, being able to automate things and everything, I just, this is the way that I want to work. And the cool thing is that I can still take the same approach of, um, kind of compiling everything as I'm mixing an album and I want to make sure that everything's good if I need to do corrective EQ or anything. But then the digital release options, we also have some new things in terms of being able to export everything together at the same time. So this is something I have to use, I used to have to do in different passes. I would do a pass where they would want to wave and then I would do a pass of MP3s and then I would do a pass of MP4s. 
Um, we do have some loudness adjustment. I, I'll be honest with you. I haven't messed around with this. Uh, if I'm ever delivering something and it's, I'm going to be delivering masters or pseudo masters, I'm going to be controlling all of that from the mixing stage right down to, um, right down to the final delivery. But like I say, honestly, even if it was just a clip gain alone and the automation, just such a massive difference to be able to pop into an automation mode. Let's go! some of those songs a lot of you recognize it was super fun to mix this um yeah just just, just honestly it's it's a killer update these these are the these are the features that i've wanted and and now that i have this i'm going to become a mastering engineer no i'm just joking now that i have this it allows me to work the way that i have been working uh, to have the flexibility of doing the digital releases this way, I can keep control of everything. And, you know, in the cases where I do have to deliver masters, where I'm brought on board and there isn't much of a budget to go to mastering, or I don't want to take a huge hit on the mixing budget just to be able to get it mastered by somebody, you know, if I have to hack away at things and I'm, I'm confident in my mixes, now I have a way that I can work where I can automate my plugins, I can automate my clip gain, I can, or, or rather I can adjust my clip gain, my event gain, I can adjust all the volume automation. I'm going to stop talking now because obviously you get the point here. But a super awesome update. I'm so glad to see the project page getting some love. Um, big shout out to Rick and John for allowing me to use some of this material. It's currently unreleased. Uh, I'm hoping you should be able to keep your eye out for this uh, album sometime in the near future in 2022. That's it for me. Two thumbs up. Great job from the folks at Personas, and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers. <laughs>